Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Today we are doing a little bit of arts and crafts. We are going to learn about why you might want to have a protective kind of pad or something on the side of your rack tom so that it doesn't get banged up by your snare drum. Now coming up, uh, this was a thing that I saw a few times, I didn't really know what it was for or why it was there, and since having some kits that had like nice finishes on them, or maybe that were more of like an oil finish on the raw wood that would show dings really easily, this has become something that I do on my gigging kits pretty much all the time. We're just going to get right down to it. I'm going to show you one that came from a store, and then show you a couple of ways that you can make one at home just out of things you might have lying around. Thanks again so much to the patrons on our Patreon for making sure that we get to make this season. This is a patron financed episode. We are really excited about all the things that we're going to be making because of that support. So just monumental thanks to all of you. All right, first off, this thing here, this kind of Cordura squid. So the idea here is that this is basically just cloth on both sides with some foam inside and four strings coming off of it. And the idea here is that you tie these four strings around the tension rods that are basically facing your snare drum so that you can have your rack tom and your snare close to each other. And if you happen to rock the snare, if you're playing it really hard, or if your rack tom happens to move during the gig and they're touching, this is what the snare's hoop is banging against instead of the side of your tom on your nice kit that you just got or your vintage kit that you love. Upfront PSA, no effect on the sound of anything at all. <laughs> uh, the drums will sound exactly the same as they did before you put this on there. This is strictly a matter of not having to worry about those dings that we see on so many used kits. The way to do this is to get at the side of your drum. Um, with the way that this one's mounted, it's fairly easy to just sort of push it away on the mount and twist it a little bit so that the side we want to affix it to is facing up. If you're on a snare basket, it might be easier to take it off and just sort of do it on the floor or do it in your lap or something like that. The main thing that you want to do is make sure that it's centered and that it's under a little bit of tension and not just sort of loosely flopping around because you want it to kind of stay in place once your kit is set up. And if you get the knots tied well, it's going to be very stable. And when you change the heads, you can actually just pull the tension rods out of the knot that you made and then put them back through that rather than having to knot it up every time you change heads. Now I like the freedom that this affords me to both not worry about the finish getting banged up on the drum or having damage happen and also allows me to get the drums as close together as possible which is nice for just being able to keep your movement small um, and have some kind of consistency of, of placement of things and not have to have that be a factor in terms of if they're gonna hit together on the gig if you're hitting super hard. On the other hand, this is really, at the end of the day, just some kind of pad with some strings on the ends of it. So there are lots of ways that you could make an equivalent thing out of stuff you might have lying around the house. Today, the way we're gonna do it is basically with a hand towel and a couple of shoelaces. And it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna kind of go through it right here. Here's where we are. We have a hand towel here. You can fold it however you want, whatever's gonna fit the size of drum with the amount of lugs that you have to kind of make this happen. What we need to do is basically affix our shoelaces to this thing so that it'll be suspended on them and then we can use those to tie off to the tension rods. But first, we're gonna poke some holes in this to sort of feed them through so that they can hang on that. And be very careful. Shoelace time. Ooh, these are in a serious little knot. Used shoelaces are acceptable. All right, and then we find our holes that we just poked feed these through and across to the other side and out. And basically what you've got here now is a square of cloth with these things fed through and this is the top of our mount. You'll notice that with the store-bought one they were in more of like off of the corners like each were singles. That's more complicated, more work so we're going to do it this way and just kind of save ourselves some trouble. All right, so now we basically have our square of cloth and we will just sort of place it in between the two sets of lugs that are nearest to us and 
tie off each one of these to the lug on the, that is at that corner of the cloth. And if we can get the knots good and tight, it'll hold it fairly tightly against that spot. And because the lugs are the endpoints where it's tight, it's not going to shift around at all. It's going to stay exactly where you put it. And then you're just going to have a nice kind of soft barrier there. I have also seen people do this with leather, which is another kind of easy way to do it if that's a route you want to take or, or even vinyl. It doesn't have to be thick. It doesn't have to be a lot of padding. This is like abrasion resistance. If you're worried about really banging into it, then you could, you know, get something a little bit thicker. But this is basically just to save all that rash that we always see on rack toms. And in some cases, floor toms too, you know, if they're next to each other, if the heights are different, or if maybe you've got like stands that are nearby, that kind of thing. Now we're gonna spin the tom and put this on there. All right, back in position, and as you can see, very well padded. This is the very most DIY version of this process. Um, you know, how aesthetically pleasing you want it to be is totally up to you. This is, you know, just an experiment, and it absolutely works. Depending, again, on how much protection you need, like if you just want it to be abrasion resistant or if you want it to really be able to take a hit or something like that, um, you know, you can kind of choose your own adventure as far as that goes. But it is nice to know that if, you know, people start to break down your kit for you, which is a thing that happens at some venues, or if people want to help you, you know, when they're setting up the mics and they're pushing your toms back and forth when they're miking things, this is just a nice thing to be able to trust isn't going to happen to you. I also started thinking about doing this myself after I discovered that these things were not so easy to find online. Um, they may be more easy to find now, but a few years ago when I was looking for them, I didn't find a lot of options that were either affordable or that seemed like they were going to last for very long. These ones that I have, these black ones, were just something that I found in a bin of used stuff years ago in a drum shop. Um, and they've held up nicely. But anytime you can make it yourself, you know, it's cheaper, it's personalized, and you can really kind of follow your own aesthetic with how you want these things to behave for you and how you want them to add to the look of your kit. All right, thanks for watching today's little arts and crafts hack tip. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell down there so you get notifications about our new videos. We are well into season three now largely funded by the patrons and we're really appreciating that a ton the exclusive series that we've been talking about are going to start getting rolled out on the patreon very soon um, please go over there and check it out if you haven't already there's a link below this video you can learn about the tiers and about the perks and all that stuff um, definitely get to watch me run my mouth a whole lot more and definitely play more drums there's a lot more demonstration stuff on there as well and do please let us know um, Anything that you've done to your kit to protect it on the gig. Anything from, I mean, cymbal washers on down. I know that I carry a little kind of triage kit with me when I go to play um, particularly backline kits, but when it's your own kit, that's another level of making sure that it doesn't get messed with. Um, yeah, check it out and uh, let us know. <laughs>